I was caught up in frills Like fuck the billboards I'ma hit the border for bills So I'm laying in the shades Playing with them K's Have fun I'll lay some paper on his waves He's playing like you brave And now I don't know you But I have some dirt on you When I lay you in the grave I'm past hot Ask not I'll leave your cat What's good? It's your boy 2K here. Robert Guerrero announces his retirement from boxing earlier today after getting knocked out in brutal fashion in three rounds by Omar Figueroa this past Saturday. Now, a narrative that I kept reading on social media and that I've heard uh, people talk about in their YouTube videos was that Omar Figueroa was going to struggle against Robert Guerrero because Guerrero was the bigger guy. And they base that off of the fact that Robert Guerrero has been campaigning at welterweight longer than Omar Figueroa has. Shit, this was only uh, Figueroa's second fight at 147. His first fight was against Antonio DeMarco two years ago, right? Almost two years ago anyway. Um, so they figured Guerrero was the bigger guy. But in all actuality, Omar Figueroa is the bigger guy. Robert Guerrero has fought as low as 122 pounds in his career, while Omar Figueroa has fought as low as 135. He's also fought as high as the junior middleweight division. Uh, I think he weighed as much as 151 in his career, while Robert Guerrero, his most, the most that he's weighed in was in the actual welterweight division within the welterweight limit, right? So Omar Figueroa was actually the bigger guy, even though uh, Robert Guerrero has been campaigning at 147 since beating Selkirk Iden, right? And it showed in this fight. I mean, it was a phone booth type of fight. Uh, Omar Figueroa was beating his ass up on the inside, ended up knocking down Robert Guerrero five times in this fight. He knocked him down three times in the second round, twice in the third round, uh, where a hellacious body shot ultimately had the referee waving the fight off in the third round. Now, uh, Omar Figueroa is not really that great of a fighter in my opinion. Um, Robert Guerrero is a little washed up. The biggest name on his resume uh, would probably be Ricky Burns at 135. You know what I'm saying? And that fight was held in Hildago, Texas, which is uh, south of where I'm at right now. And those scorecards were kind of wide. A lot of people thought uh, the scorecard should have been a lot closer. But that's the type of shit you get in Texas, man. We don't have a, uh, athletic, a state athletic commission here. So that's why you get a lot of robberies, promoters, paying niggas off and shit. Motherfuckers running wild. Judges running wild down here with these ridiculous ass scorecards. Because there's really no, there's no athletic commission to govern that. You know what I'm saying? So that's why you see... A lot of fuckery in Texas after fights um, but nevertheless a lot of people thought that fight was closer but Omar Figueroa did win um, two fights before that at 135 uh, Figueroa fought a guy by the name of Jerry Belmontez and he struggled in that fight he won by split decision and after that fight he had already made the decision that he was too big for 135 and that he was gonna go up to 147 and possibly become a champion there so two fights after that, he beats Ricky Burns, and then he moves up to 147, beats Antonio DeMarco, already washed up Antonio DeMarco. Um, and then after that, of course, he knocks out Robert Guerrero after a year and a half layoff, right, this past Saturday. Now, what this video is really about is I've been seeing a lot of motherfuckers on social media talk about Robert Guerrero has done enough to be put in the Hall of Fame. <laughs> now, I'm gonna try to go as subtle with this as I can without trying to shit on Robert Guerrero. I think Robert Guerrero is a good fighter. If I rated his career uh, overall, I'd give him a B minus to a B. You know what I'm saying? And I'm gonna break all that down right now. Um, a couple of misconceptions that people didn't understand that they kept saying on social media was that Robert Guerrero was a champion at 140 and a champion at 147. That's highly false. Robert Guerrero did exactly what Omar Figueroa did um, at 135. He skipped the 140 pound division 
and went straight into the 147 pound division. His first fight being against Selkic Iden, and then he beat Andre Berto right after that, which was really his breakout fight. Um, and in my opinion, it's probably the best win on his resume besides uh, Yoel Casamayor at 135. Uh, the Andre Berto win actually got him the shot at Floyd Mayweather. Now at 147, he actually had three chances to win a title. Of course, the Floyd Mayweather fight, I think it was for the WBA Super and the WBC title. He struck out there. Then he had a vacant title shot against Danny Garcia, who had just beat uh, Pauly Malignaggi. Um, there was a, it was a vacant fight for the WBC title. He struck out there. Then he challenged Keith Thurman for the WBA Super title, and he struck out there. So he had three chances, and uh, he pretty much he lost all three of his major title shot chances. When he beat Andre Berto, a lot of cats thought he was the WBC champion. No. When he beat Andre Berto, he won the WBC silver title. You know what I'm saying? And that's what uh, ended up him being the mandatory for Floyd Mayweather. You know what I'm saying? But I will say this. He was a three-time IBF champion from 126 to 130. He never won a title uh, any of the other three major sanctioning bodies. He never won the WBO, WBC, or the WBA. It was always the IBF from 126 to 130 and he only won it three times twice at 126 and once at 130 now uh the first time he won it at 126 he beat a guy by the name by the name of eric aiken now eric aiken was the ibf title holder at that time and it was kind of like a miracle title win for him he was a guy that was never really expected to be a world champion um so when robert guerrero and Eric, the Eric Aiken fight was made, uh, majority of motherfuckers knew Robert Guerrero was gonna win this fight. He was expected to win, and that's what he did. He went in there and knocked Eric Aiken out in uh, eight rounds, and it was due to a hellacious, uh, the, the hellacious body attack that he had at that time. Now, of course, this was the ghost, you know what I'm saying? He went from being the ghost to later on in his career where he ended up retiring as the refrigerator. You know what I'm saying? A motherfucker that stands right in front of his opponents. And I'll get into later on in this video why him being the refrigerator ended up ultimately costing him his career. But uh, but yeah, after he won the IBF title 126, uh, his first title defense, so, a lot of shit, uh, something that a lot of people don't know was that he challenged Orlando Salido and was beat convincingly. Uh, Orlando Salido did to him what he does against every other fighter. You know, he's he's a bull. And uh, Robert Guerrero tried to play the Matador, but he failed at that. Scorecards, the scorecards were wide. Uh, Orlando Salido bullied Robert Guerrero for 12 rounds. He took his IBF title, but Orlando Salido got popped for steroids and a drug test right after that fight. So the decision was to overturn made a no contest and the IBF title was vacant and this led to Robert Guerrero getting the belt a second time at 126 when he beat a guy by the name of Spin Abazi now I remember Spin Abazi he was 35 and 1 um, he didn't have a lot of pub around him because he was a fighter that fought exclusively in Denmark he hadn't really fought anybody on Robert Guerrero's level he hadn't even fought anybody on a B level like a B-level uh, uh, American, you know what I'm saying, being over there in the uh, in Denmark. But there was uh, some pub around him when this fight was announced. Just because he was 35 and one, a lot of people thought he was gonna give him some, uh, give Robert Guerrero some some uh, some problems. But Guerrero went ahead and dispatched to him uh, three months later after losing to Orlando Salido by eighth round TKO. All right, he went on to defend the title twice against two guys who were never uh, title holders, major title holders. They never were world champions, but they were always known as pretty decent contenders. And that's Martin Hanario and Jason Litzow. I remember that Jason Litzow was almost like a great white hope. You know what I'm saying? At, at 126, they really wanted him to be somebody, but he could never fit that bill. He could never uh, become what a lot of the box, boxing pundits and a lot of his fans wanted him to become. Um, but Robert Guerrero went ahead and defend his title against those two guys before moving to 130 vacating his 126 pound title and then he gets two fights uh, at 130 
then goes on and challenges Malcolm Classen uh, for the IBF 130 pound title in 2009. Okay, takes the takes the belt from Malcolm Classen by decision. Now at that time, Malcolm Classen was a, a respectable guy. He wasn't seen as a guy that was one of the best fighters in the sport, none of that nature, you know what I'm saying? But he was seen as a respectable dude. Robert Guerrero went in there and took his belt at 130. Now, right after that, he was scheduled, I think it was like three months later, four months later, he was scheduled to have a February 2010 uh, mandatory IBF title defense against Michael Katsidis, but he had to cancel that. Now, y'all motherfuckers know how the IBF do. They don't fuck around, just ask Tyson Fury. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? If they want you to fight a mandatory, they will do everything in their power to make sure that you fight that mandatory. That's courtesy of Daryl Peoples. You know what I'm saying? The, C the uh, CEO of, or the president of the IBF, you know what I'm saying? Daryl Peoples does not fuck around. He almost had Sergey Limpnuts fucking up the 140 pound undisputed uh, 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 championship between Terrence Crawford and Julius Andango because the IBF don't fuck around. They want their, their champions to fight their mandatories. But anyway, so he was supposed to fight Michael Katsidis. Um, the IBF was like, hey, you fight him or we, you know, you're going to have to vacate. We're going to strip you. Well, Robert Guerrero went ahead and vacated and canceled that fight because his wife was battling you, uh, leukemia. So he decided to take a break from boxing and go ahead and spend more time with his wife. So he vacated the title at 130 pounds. And that was actually the last time Robert Guerrero was a champion. So that would have been in 2009, right? Vacated in February 2010. Um, he did go on to fight Vicente Escobedo, uh, Yoel Casamayor. Now at that time, Yoel Casamayor had already been knocked out by uh, Juan Manuel Marquez. And after that fight, a lot of people, including myself, was like, yeah, Yoel Casamayor is done, you know what I'm saying? They need to retire. Robert Guerrero fought him after we, the general consensus believed that Joel Casamayor was done. You know what I'm saying? Then he does go on to eventually fight Michael Katsidis. And again, <laughs> none other than Juan Manuel Marquez had already knocked out Michael Katsidis in the ninth round. You know what I'm saying? Prior to that fight. And Michael Katsidis was never a world champion either. He was always another guy, kind of like Jason Litzow. A lot of people really, really wanted him to be a world champion. They really wanted him to, uh, 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 they had high expectations for him, but he could never fit that bill. And he even had high expectations for himself. He kept fighting, you know, well after his prime in hopes to be actually become a world champion just one time, you know what I'm saying? But he could never fit that bill, you know what I'm saying? He could never rise to the occasion. Um, but yeah, he ends up fighting him. Then, I think after, let's see, yeah, the Cat, the Casamayor and Cat Cetus fights were from July 2010 to April 2011, and they were all from interim titles. That's all he ever fought for in the rest of his career after relinquishing that IBF belt at 130 pounds in February 2010. It was all interim titles all the way up to 147 to the end of his career, right? Um, after the Cat uh, Cetus fight, he moves up to 147, and that's when he beats Selkic Iden. And then directly after that, he fights Andre Berto to win the WBC silver title. And as I stated earlier, that's how he got his title shot with Floyd Mayweather. Now, <laughs> the crazy thing is this. Right after the Mayweather clash, right? This brings us to the present day. Robert Guerrero has lost five of his last seven fights, including the Floyd Mayweather fight. You know what I'm saying? Now, that's arguably, arguably he lost six out of his last seven because a lot of people felt he got a gift decision against C-level fighter Aaron Martinez. Now, if y'all don't remember who Aaron Martinez is, he's the same cat that retired Devin Alexander. You know what I'm saying? He arguably lost that fight, and I'm one of those cats that felt that way. I felt he lost to Aaron Martinez, you know what I'm saying? So since the Floyd Mayweather fight, 
I believe that fight happened in 2013, right? I think it was Cinco de Mayo 2013. He lost six of his last seven, officially five of his last seven. The last two guys, um, Omar Figueroa, who, like I said, I don't think he's that good, but he is an undefeated fire. I gotta give him credit for that, and he did beat Ricky Burns. Um, and then Peralta, a guy nobody fucking knows, and after Peralta beat, Robert Guerrero, nobody still fucking knows him. You know what I'm saying? He lost the two guys that he probably would have beaten if he was the ghost. You see what I'm saying? Now, before I wrap this video up, I want to talk about what I had mentioned earlier, how he moved from being the ghost to being the refrigerator. See, it all started with his rise from 135 to 147. Against Selkic Iden, he did have that come forward, stand in the pocket type of style, but then he backed up and started boxing Iden because Iden had power in each hand. That's who he was known for. He was a Turkish fighter that was knocking a lot of motherfuckers out. Guy hasn't really been tested, uh, wasn't really fighting a lot of uh, cats, you know what I'm saying? But he had power in both hands. So Robert Guerrero, with his first fight at 147, of course, skipping 140, he wasn't going to stand in the pocket with him for too long. So he did, you know, uh, uh, show uh, why he is the ghost or why he was the ghost prior to that, that jump to 147, right? But then when he fought Andre Berto, that's when he changed his style. Now, he changed his style for that fight, and ironically, that was really the only fight that it worked for him. You know what I'm saying? Andre Berto... His dumb ass was in there trying to do a fucking shoulder roll. You know what I'm saying? Andre Burrow's never been known as a defensive fighter one day of his motherfucking life since birth. You know what I'm saying? Never been a defensive fighter. He fucks around and goes and trains at the Mayweather gym for a hot minute. And then all of a sudden, this nigga think he a professional at the shoulder roll. And that's what ultimately got his ass whooped by the aggressive Robert Guerrero. Now, at that time, a lot of people were like, yeah, 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 this new aggressive Guerrero, that shit is nice. You know what I'm saying? He fucked up Andre Burrow. But it ultimately cost him in his next seven fights because that aggressive style is the reason why he lost to uh, Floyd Mayweather. He would have lost to Floyd Mayweather any goddamn way, even if he was the ghost. But I think he would have won or possibly won more rounds if he would have utilized better footwork, would have not tried to be directly in front of Floyd Mayweather, allowing himself to get countered, you know what I'm saying? And, and try not to take over that, you know, Oscar De La Hoya blueprint of trying to maul Floyd Mayweather. It's not going to beat Floyd Mayweather. Many have tried to do that. All have failed. You know what I'm saying? You don't beat Floyd Mayweather that way. You try to, you got to, you got to have a combination of IQ, boxing ability, fast hands, and enough power to keep him honest. Like what Zab Judah did in the first four rounds of their fight, that's how you beat Floyd Mayweather. Okay? So... Um, Robert Guerrero really didn't have that ability. None of those abilities that Zab Judah exhibited in that fight. So he would have lost any fucking way. But it's the reason why he lost to Robert, uh, uh, Danny Garcia. It's the reason why he lost to Keith Thurman. It's the reason why he lost to Peralta. It's definitely the fucking reason why he lost to Omar Figueroa. And it's the reason why he should have arguably lost to Aaron Martinez. Standing right in front of his fighter. Trying to fight on the inside and getting outworked. You know what I'm saying? I don't understand why Ruben Guerrero told Robert Guerrero from the Mayweather fight on, or I'm sorry, from the Andre Berto fight on that this is the new style that you're going to exhibit. I don't know if it's a fucking agreement that these two came up with and training camp and said, hey, we need to get more fans on our side. I'm a three-time champion, but I'm not well known yet. So I need to be more aggressive and have a fan-friendly style and try to get these motherfuckers to, to be on my side so I can make more money and be more marketable. I don't know. Maybe that's what they talked about, but it didn't work out for him. He should have never did that because, like I said, he lost arguably six of his last seven fights because of that transition. If he would have just been the ghost, probably against Danny Garcia, uh, everybody knows Danny Garcia is a flat-footed uh, counterpuncher who has to be planted before he throws his Magic Johnson no left, no <laughs> Magic Johnson no look left hook. You know what I'm saying? He has to be planted, okay? He needs you to come forward. If you if you box Danny Garcia, you can beat him. Keith Thurman showed that. The only the only rounds that Keith Thurman lost against Danny Garcia is when he stopped boxing 
and actually stood in front of Danny Garcia and allowed Danny Garcia to score on him, okay? Robert Guerrero once possessed the boxing ability to beat Danny Garcia. The original Robert Guerrero could have beaten a Danny Garcia if he just would have been the ghost and not the refrigerator. You see what I'm saying? Uh, I think he still would have lost to Keith Thurman, but he would have gave him some trouble. Like I said, Robert Guerrero has a nice body attack, but you wouldn't know that because he doesn't, he didn't really go to the body when he had this style transformation. He would go down there sometimes, but it was more so a lot of a upper body attack, you know what I'm saying? Trying to bully his opponent, but that's not your fucking style. That's not where you were born and bred to do, fam. You know what I'm saying? But it is what it is, man. Um, it sucks for him that... You know, Ruben Guerrero was not a smart enough trainer to tell his son to keep doing what he's doing, even at the higher weights. And and that's the funny thing. When you when you gain weight and you get older, you have to be more defensively sound. You know what I'm saying? That's what Floyd Mayweather had to do. Pretty boy Floyd was knocking motherfuckers out. Highly offensive. He was still a good defensive fighter, but he was he was highly offensive. As he got older, as his hands got brittle, injuries started started taking effect. Um he didn't have the same kind of reflexes, didn't have the same kind of leg movement. He had to become a defensive genius. And that's what we've seen. A lot of fighters in the history of the sport had to make that transition as they got older and as they gained weight and as they moved up and weight and their power didn't carry from one weight to the next. That's what Robert Guerrero was supposed to have done, except uh, instead he did the reverse and that's what ultimately ended his career. So. To answer the question, should Robert Guerrero be Hall of Fame? That is a big ass motherfucking hell. No. YouTube, do what you do in the comment section and be real. Let me know what you think about Robert Guerrero's career and him retiring. This is real talk for real fans. One.